I remember there was an article, I think it was LA Times that, that did it about you, where they said that no drug lord could have been more un-Machiavellian than you. What does you. that mean? I don't know what that means. Well, it said that Rick preferred love to fear. Oh, absolutely. Well, Machiavelli, his thing was to, you know, it's better to be feared than loved. Where you were kind of the exact opposite. You didn't want to be feared. No. You wanted to be loved. But always have the stick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to always have that stick where if you ever need it, you know, you can pull that stick out. Um, a lot of times people don't have both. You know, if you got the love and the stick, it's like, <laughs> come on, take this love. <laughs> but in case you don't want to take it, here's the stick. Uh, well, you did an event one time with Frank Lucas. I did. But we interviewed him once. I didn't do the interview myself, unfortunately, but we have you know, one of his interviews in the can. You said that you actually didn't like the way he operated. I didn't. Explain. Uh, his attitude despised me. Um, we were with the Nation of Islam. Farrakhan had, had, had uh, asked us to come up. And um, he was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Farrakhan had like four or five guys with us that was guarding us and taking us around. And um, these guys were pushing him and in the chair and, you know, helping him, being, being help. I mean, you know, they were being helpful. Mm -hmm. And he just kept like just saying little stuff to him. Like, oh, you, you push my chair wrong. You know, don't, 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 don't do that. Don't. You know, like to me, it was like being over bossy, you know, being over... Um, I don't know the correct word that I'm looking for, but he wasn't polite to him. Like with me, I was like, man, I got four guys <laughs> going with me everywhere I go, you know, shuffling me around. To me, it was an honor. You know, it was nothing these guys could have did wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I use Nation of Islam for, for security. The FOI, I use them for certain situations. Very he, professional, great. It's nice to be around them, actually. But he didn't, he didn't feel like that. You know, yeah. He felt like they was below him, they was beneath him, and, and, and he talked to him like that. And I, I, did, I didn't appreciate it. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people didn't shed a lot of tears when Frank Lucas passed away uh, a few years back. Um, you know, I, I didn't get to meet him personally. We have one interview with him. But uh, I guess having a movie about you makes you feel a certain type of way when Denzel's playing you and you're now a... Uh, you're a star. You're a star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you said that you don't want enemies, you only want friends. Yeah, I would rather have friends than enemies. Do you have any enemies right now? None that I know of. Really? No. None? None that I know of. Hmm. Maybe a rapper. He probably, he probably hates me. Um, he would probably be the closest person that I would think of that... Um, that don't like me. I mean, which he should be the one who, who likes me the most. What, what about the cops you testified against? Uh, yeah, they probably do. <laughs> <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of them, he was on the documentary, so. Oh, 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 that was one of the guys that testified against you. I mean, that you testified against. Yeah. He ah, was, okay. He was one of them. A Spanish guy, right? Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably sure it is. I mean, I, I'm not mad at them, yeah. you know. I'm not. Uh, I'm not holding. No, well, you know what? Yeah, I know uh, Steve Pollock. He he hates me because we tried to get him. Uh, we tried to get him in a documentary. Who was that? Steve Pollock. He was one of the top. One of the top cops. Uh, the Rampart. No, he was in. The, he was on the Freeway Task Force. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got fired before the, the <laughs> Rampart case. Uh, but yeah, he he hates me. Uh, when when they talked to him about uh, trying to get him in a documentary, he say all all kind of n words, um, <laughs> but and yeah, they probably they probably do. But the general cops don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't think the average cop on the street hates me. Um, well, you're not a drug dealer anymore. I mean, you're a marijuana dealer, but you're not a, <laughs> an illegal drug dealer anymore. An illegal one. Well, what's the? Yeah, I I love you know. I remember at one point I was in the mixtape game and I was selling mixtapes, which was not exactly illegal. And I remember when DJ Drama got busted by the feds, I said, I'm done with this. Well, I saw his BMW being yeah. towed away and I was hearing how his bank accounts were seized. I said, ah, to live 
always looking over your shoulder, wondering when the feds are going to kick down your door, they're See, going to take all your going. money. I probably would have kept going. No, nah, not me. <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. I, I, I was looking for something that had, that had more of a, a legal edge to it. Edge to it. And also, it's like, at least for me, like you and I are different in this regard. But for me, I felt the bigger you get doing something illegal just makes the bust that much harsher. So I wasn't motivated to build an illegal business. And let me tell you, I was a partner in a major mixtape site, which I never really put a lot of effort into. My partner hated me, hated me, because I would just put minimal effort into it, even though I was a co-owner, because I'm like, the bigger we get, the more we get on the radar of the feds. And when we do get busted, it's going to be that much worse. So as soon as I, as soon as that happened, and I'm like, I'm just going to focus on this video shit, I just... Let him have when, the company and call it a day. When I sold drugs, though, I felt that that, that was, that's what I was supposed to be doing in life. Yeah. So it, it's like when you feel like this is your niche, then you, you're willing to, to pay whatever penalty it is. You know, if it means dying or killing or, or going to prison, you know, that's all part of, of what you got to go through.